We have reached the end of another week. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home here in beautiful Lime Bay. Thank you once again for, well, just for joining us, because I do appreciate it. I know that you've got lots of other things you could be listening to, so the fact that you choose our little podcast does, it warms the cockles of my heart. I'm Brett, I'm your host for our Nighttime Podcast. Welcome to another end of the week episode. I've got Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And I'd love it if you could follow me. I don't know if you listened to yesterday's uh, podcast, but you'll remember that I ate a lot of cake and I'm still eating cake today. I could do with you guys just coming down, popping down over the weekend, just really to eat some cake. So if you could do that, that'd be brilliant. Don't forget to check out our brand new podcast, Sunday Night Mystery. It's all true crime stuff. It's about murders and unsolved murders and Anyway, just give it a little a little listen if you get a minute or two. They're only sort of 10, 15 minutes, the episodes, so they're quite short, but I hopefully have packed all the information in there regarding all the different stories. Time now for our latest bit of comedy and adventure all rolled into one. Episode 21 of Series 1. This is Dad's Army. It's called Present Arms. We present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in a special edition of Dad's Army. <laughs> present Arms, featuring John Lally, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with today's guests Bill Pertwee, Pearl Hackney, Larry Martin, Geoffrey Lumsden, Jack Watson and Norman Bird. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. It is December 1941. And as Christmas approaches and Hitler continues his attack on Europe, it is obvious that at this season of goodwill, no break in hostilities can be expected. For thousands of men on active service, it will mean enforced absence from their families. Even the Home Guard will be carrying on their regular duties. Come on, come on, pay attention. Oh, I say. Pay attention, men. This evening, Captain Manrin and Sergeant Wilson are going to be busy in the vicar's office getting on with the paperwork. Well, if it's any help, I'll mix the paste. That'll do, Private Walker. <laughs> Captain Manrin's asked me to give you a lecture on bayonet drill. Now, remember, lads, there's no substitute for the old cold steel. They don't like it up, you know. They do not like it up, which I may have mentioned to you before. Many times. Many, many times. <laughs> uh, just be quiet in the ranks. I will not have talking while I'm talking. Now, when it comes to bayonet drill, very important thing to remember is your scream. Now, the scream is the thing that really puts the wind up the enemy. Now, you fill your lungs up with the air and let it out like this. Mind what you're doing, Jones, eh? You won't go for it up, then. <laughs> Just be quiet, Fraser. Now, I want you all to try some screaming. Mr Jones, if we all start screaming, won't it upset Mr Manning and Uncle Arthur and their paperwork? Don't you concern yourself with them, Pikey. They'll be too busy to worry about us. Have you got all those requisition duplicates in date order yet, Wilson? Oh, yes, I almost, sir. Just on the last dozen or so. That's been nearly 500 of them. Just look at the height of this pile. I can't see very well from here. The typewriter's in the way. Hold them up. Oh, yes, right. Of course, <laughs> Hey, I see. Now look. Hmm, glorious. Are a lot, aren't they? Yeah! Oh. What earth was that? Why, if you dropped them all on the floor, was <laughs> You'd have to start again now, wouldn't you? I'd be sorry, sir. I was rather shaken by that terrible noise. What are they doing out there? Bayonet practice, of course. Well, why couldn't they do it a little more quietly? Of course, they can't do it quietly. It's action. That's what that is. Oh. Action with a capital A. Oh, is it? <laughs> Wouldn't mind your showing a bit more action sometimes, Wilson? Doing a bit of screaming? Yes, well, somehow I don't think screaming is quite my style, sir. No. <laughs> I sometimes wonder just what is your style, oh, Wilson? By the way, sir, I, I, I completely forgot. This parcel came for you just before you arrived. It's from Gills, the tailors. Oh, good, good. This must be the new hat I ordered. It's just come in time for the ceremonial church parade on Sunday. There, what do you think? Hmm. <laughs> Awfully natty. I do wish they didn't have to be quite so noisy out there. It's so difficult to concentrate. Oh, does, Jock. 
Your turn, Walker. Aim at the dummy's chest. What you are, Jonesy? Ah! Oh, really? <laughs> Jim, I, I think I'll just pop into the hall, sir, and ask them to keep the noise down a bit. I wouldn't if I were you, Wilson. Hmm? They put the practice dummy up just outside the office. <laughs> You might turn out to be their first real target. <laughs> I see. Well, that has, uh, perhaps it isn't all that bad after all. You can be next, Pikey. All right, Mr. Jones. Yes, I really am terribly pleased with this new hat. I shall definitely wear it at the parade on Sunday. Now, let's see. I'd better put it somewhere safe for the moment. Well, there's a nail behind the door, sir. Oh, yes, that's an idea. <laughs> My hat. There's a bayonet clean through it. Well, I don't suppose the vicar's going to be very pleased with the hole in his office door. The vicar can go to hell. <laughs> well, that's not very likely, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manreen. Pike, you stupid boy. Look what you've done to my hat. Look at this hole. Oh, dear. Was your head in it? Of course it was. <laughs> Point is, this is a new hat. I won't be able to wear it at the church parade now, will I? Not if it's raining. That'll do. <laughs> Answer that, will you? All right, sir. Warrington 333. You really should be more careful, Pike. I'm sorry, Mr. Manry. <clears throat> it's your wife, sir. Tell her I'm not in. But she just heard you shouting. <laughs> Very well. Hello, Elizabeth. <laughs> yes, yes, dear. Yeah. Well, I know, dear, but... I... The fact is, I just couldn't stand sleeping with you any longer down in the shelter. <laughs> we haven't had any air raids for months, dear. Just a minute, Elizabeth. Pike, don't stand there gawping, boy. Get out. <laughs> What's that? What? I can't come and move the bedding back into the shelter now. It's out of the question. What? Oh, yes. Very well, Elizabeth. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. I'm afraid I shall have to go, Wilson. I'll leave you to dismiss the parade. Yes, of course, sir. I quite understand. I'll just slip out of the side door. Perhaps you'd explain to the men that I've been called away on urgent business. All right, sir. Good night. Right now. We'll move the dummy up the other end of the hall so that we don't have no more accidents. Evening, Corporal. Oh, good well, evening, Captain Square. Platoon. Ted. Cut. Captain Main wearing in? Yes, sir. Shall I tell him you're here? No, don't bother. I'll just breeze in. Evening, Sergeant. Oh, uh, <clears throat> good evening, Captain Square. Captain Main wearing about? Uh, well, I'm afraid he's just gone home, sir. He's been called away on urgent business. Can I help you in any way? Yes. Hmm? You haven't by any chance got a <clears throat> drop of happy juice, have you? <laughs> happy juice? Well, Puggle Parney, man. Puggle Parney. Puggle Parney? Whiskey! Where does Mainwaring keep his whiskey? He doesn't drink it, sir. Extraordinary. <laughs> In that case, I won't stay long. <laughs> I just want to make sure that Mainwaring had received the orders that I sent last week. What orders, sir? About the medals. What medals? Why do you keep repeating everything I say, Sergeant? What's the matter with you? Nothing, sir, nothing. I, I, I just can't quite follow your drift. <sighs> Look, Sergeant. Last week, when I was acting adjutant, I sent out the battalion orders which stated that... At the ceremonial church parade on Sunday, all decorations and medals will be worn. Yes, well, I, I don't think we got it, sir. Well, you must have, man. That was ten days ago. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I just, yes, yes, I, I remember now. When we were going through the papers, Captain Manning put one of them in this drawer, and when I asked him what it was, he said it was nothing important for some reason. I wonder why he put it away. Just a minute. I, yes, I, I think this is it. Well, let's have a look. I'll soon tell you. Yes, 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 this is it. At the ceremonial church parade on Sunday the 14th of December 1941, all decorations and medals will be worn. Signed, Captain Square, acting adjutant, pompous idiot. Pom <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote this on the bottom? Well, it wasn't me, sir. Damn cheek. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The penny's beginning to drop. Now, look here. In the last shindig, I was with Lawrence in the desert, fighting Johnny Turk. Who were you fighting? Well, uh, just the usual Germans, sir. 
And what about Maine Waring? He wasn't fighting anybody. He was in the army of occupation <laughs> after the war. I thought so. I thought so. That's why he didn't read those orders out. <laughs> Hadn't got any medals himself. <laughs> Doesn't want to be shown up. <laughs> I wonder if you're right. Well, of course I'm right. Now, look here. When you dismiss the parade tonight, mm -hmm. you're to read out those battalion orders. Do you understand? Now, that's an order. Evening, Wilson. I've got some rather good news to impart. Oh. I've just received this letter from HQ Southern Command. Listen. The Prime Minister will inspect the coastal defences in approximately ten days. For security reasons, date and time will not be released until the last minute. Now, this is the interesting bit. Mm -hmm. In view of the fact that your platoon was the first to be formed in the area, you have been chosen to act as Guard of Honour. Oh, that's wonderful news, sir. You see, Wilson? In the end, real leadership will always be recognised. Yes, but it, uh, it only says we've been chosen because we were the first platoon to be formed. Why do you have to spoil everything? <laughs> I should have thought it was fairly obvious that this is one of those occasions when one has to read between the lines. Yes, of course, sir, yes. It's just that I haven't had as much experience of reading between the lines as yourself. <laughs> I mean, you would hardly expect HQ to shout compliments about my leadership from the rooftops, would you? Oh, no, sir. No, no, no. I definitely wouldn't expect them to do that. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry I had to dash off last night. Uh, how are things this evening? Well, fine, sir. Fine. The men are sort of lined up, you know, if you would like to run your eye over them. Run my eye over them? Mm. Not a balance sheet, Wilson. <laughs> but a trained fighting unit. Oh, sorry, sir. Well, let's go and get on with the inspection. All right, sir. Right. After you, sir. Thank you. The two ready for inspection, sir. Thank you, Corporal. Just a minute. Who gave you permission to wear those medals? Sergeant Wilson, sir. He ordered me to wear them, sir. And in addition to which, he ordered everyone else to wear theirs, as well as also. <laughs> Wilson, what are you up to? I beg your pardon, sir? You trying to undermine my authority? It was a battalion order, sir. I merely passed it on, so to speak. I see. Well, here, Jones. Are you entitled to all that ironmonger you're wearing? <laughs> Not iron, sir. There's silver, sterling silver, or sterling copper, as the case may be. And that that one is the Katif star, sir, given to me personally by the Katif when he was in Egypt for the first Sudanese campaign. They won the campaign against the Egyptians, you understand, sir. We was on their side, and they was against the Mad Mahdi. <laughs> and he was against General Gordon, which meant, of course, that we were against the Mad Mahdi also. <laughs> Us being on the side of General Gordon, him also being British like us. <laughs> you, you follow me, sir? Yes, sir? I do. Yes, yes thank you, uh, Jones. This I, one is, is the Queen's Sudan Medal for the second Sudanese campaign against Mad Mahdi. Yes, yes, it's, it's most interesting, Jones, but I'd like to continue with the inspection now. Yes, right, sir. Right. right. Ah, Fraser. Pardon. That an authorised decoration you're wearing or some foreign thing? That is the Polar Medal, sir, for the Shackleton Expedition. Really? It's a wild and lonely place, you understand. There's nothing for the eye to behold but ice and snow. So they made the ribbon white. Very appropriate. I notice you're not wearing your medals, Captain Manning. <clears throat> Did he leave them at home? No talking in the ranks. Really. <laughs> now, who's next? Godfrey? I'm surprised at you. I thought you didn't approve of wearing decorations. Well, it was an order, sir, and I, I didn't want to upset you by appearing bare-chested. <laughs> you wouldn't have upset me, I can assure you. <laughs> Come up rather well, haven't they? My sister Sissy had a go at them with powdered chalk and vinegar. Uh, of course, lemon juice is even better, but you can't get any lemons. No. Thank you, Godfrey. I'll bear that in mind. Walker, I've no idea what that ridiculous sash and medal thing is that you're wearing. But this is not a musical comedy. Take them off at once. Here, hang on, Captain Mannering. This is the sacred order of the Golden Chris of Abadobi. How do you come by it? <laughs> Saving your old cigarette coupons? <laughs> or was it given to you by the Sheik of Araby? Well, it so happens he was a Sheik. And he had 34 wives and he was stopping in his big hotel in Park Lane. And he hadn't brought none with him. Well, I was on the old port of the staff and he asked me if I could fix him up. You know. <laughs> so I got on the blowout to a friend and the Sheik was very grateful. He gave me this medal, a kiss on both cheeks, and ten quid. <laughs> you really? Good, good heavens, Pike. What on earth are all those badges you're wearing, boy? 
than my scout badges. <laughs> scout badges? Yes. That one's a tenderfoot. <laughs> that one's for knots and splices. <laughs> then there's uh, first aid, fire making, and elementary tracking. We'll take those off as soon as this parade is over. Well, I didn't want to put them on. That no, was Mum. <laughs> she said if Uncle Arthur, Sergeant Wilson was going to show off, so must I. Fortunately, Sergeant Wilson's more sense than to... Wilson. <laughs> what do you think of doing? I'm just pinning these on, sir. After all, I am entitled to them. You're not entitled to get dressed while I'm inspecting the troops. I'm sorry, sir. I forgot to put them on earlier. I see. I can't send any more of this. I'll be... <clears throat> Dismiss the parade and come and see me in the office. Yes, all right, Captain Manry. <clears throat> right now, just before I dismiss you, I would like to say how awfully nice you all looked <laughs> this evening with your medals and things. Oh, thank you, Captain. Awfully nice. <clears throat> Wilson, are you going to be much longer? No, I'm coming, sir, I'm coming. All right, platoon. Dismiss. Aye, sir. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Oh, you. you wanted me, sir. How dare you, Wilson? I beg your pardon? How dare you go over my head in this underhand fashion? I don't know what all the nonsense is about. I really don't. I mean, it was a battalion order. I mean, I, I just passed it on. It was in my pending drawer. And you have no authority to rummage in my pending drawer. <laughs> Hello there, blimey. It's a bit parky out, isn't it? Oh, dear. dear, oh dear. I'm glad I'm not a brass monkey. <laughs> I reckon we shall have a white Christmas at this rate. What the hell do you want, Hodges? Oh, that's very nice. That is, yes. And a Merry Christmas to you, too. I said, what do you want? Hang on while I get this wet Mac off. Do you mind not dripping all over my manuals? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, I'm sorry, mate. Yes. Have you, uh, have you finished with me, sir? No, I haven't even begun. <laughs> I want to make it quite clear that I do not approve of these medals sprawling all over everybody's chest. It's this war we are concerned with. Not the last, or the one before that. What's the matter then, Napoleon? Didn't they give you any? <laughs> We're not discussing me. In fact, Hodges, I'm not discussing anything with you at all. Get out of my orderly room. This is the vicar's office, and he gives me permission to hang my hat in here any time I choose. Well, if I were you, I wouldn't hang it behind that door. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I've got a lecture in the oar, so keep your voice down, right? What a common man he is. Oh. <laughs> oh. Still... He was with us in the last lot, wasn't he? What do you mean? Well, didn't you notice? He was wearing his 1418 medals. That's just the sort of thing that I don't approve of. Hmm? Gallantry is one thing, but to hand out these bits of brass for every tin pot little campaign just for being there makes a mockery of the whole thing. Well, still, it doesn't do much harm, does it? And when we have these parades, it's rather marvellous for people like Captain Square, striding out at the head of his platoon with his gongs flapping in the breeze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he'd love every minute of it. On the other hand, it's not much fun for those of us who don't have any medals. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, uh, like, uh, like, uh, like Pike, for instance. Oh, I see. Mm. <laughs> right, you're dismissed now, Wilson. Go polish your medals for the parade. <laughs> you're going to polish your cap badge. I so. said you were dismissed. <laughs> Get out. Say, Mr. Wilson, Captain Manning's run it a bit fine for the church service, isn't he? Uh -huh, it's only half an hour before the parade moves off. I'm sure he won't be long, Fraser. You know, I can't help feeling sorry for old Mannering. After all, it's not his fault he hasn't got any medals. Yeah, it's a disgrace. That's what it is being led by man with nothing up here on his chest. <laughs> I mean, we know he's got nothing between his ears either. <laughs> we're, we're, we're used to that. Perhaps we ought to take our medals off. Uh, then Mr. Manning wouldn't feel out of place. He can't do that, Mr. Godfrey. It was a battalion order to wear our medals. Yeah, here, here comes Mr. Manning now. Here, look, Joe. Look, look, look. That's funny. He's in civvies. Morning, everybody. Morning, sir. 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 Everyone here, Wilson? Uh, all except Private Pike, sir. He seems to be late. Right. Fall the men in, sir. Yes, of course, sir. Right, sir. All right, fall in, please. I have a little announcement to make to the platoon. All right, sir. Platoon, attention. <laughs> Thank you, son. Very smart, man. Very smart indeed. And at this morning's church parade, I'm sure that you'll all be a credit to the platoon. Unfortunately, 
due to circumstances beyond my control, I'm afraid that I shall not be able to be with you. You see, my dear wife, Elizabeth, sent my uniform to the dry cleaners. <laughs> <laughs> now, she didn't tell me this until we were having lunch yesterday. Naturally, I rushed round straight away. But unfortunately, as you know, they always close at one o'clock on Saturdays. And I'm afraid I was too late. If I, if I'd had another uniform, of course, it would be a different matter. Hurry up, Pike, you're late. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Manning, but I've got something for you. Oh, what's that? Well, you see, yesterday morning, I was coming home from the bank, and I popped into the cleaners to collect something. And I saw your uniform hanging there. Well, I knew you'd want it today, so I picked it up for you. There you are. <laughs> Thank you, Pike. I, uh, it was two and three, Mr. Manning, but you can owe it me if you like. <laughs> yes. Very thoughtful of you, Pike. But I'm afraid the arrival of my uniform at this late juncture isn't going to help. You see, I, I haven't time to change. Oh, you'll be all right, sir. The parade doesn't start until ten o'clock. You've got twenty minutes. We don't mind waiting, do we, man? Well, I, uh, what, um... Mm. Oh, look, look! The cleaners have broken a couple of buttons off. Uh, oh, that's all right, Mr. Barry. If someone will thread the needle for me, I'll replace them for you. Remember, I, I was in the gentleman's outfitting for fifteen years. And I can sell you a pair of braces if you want them, nice and cheap. <laughs> well, I must say, you're all... I <clears throat> really don't know how to... Uh, well, no, very well. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say this for Captain Mannering. He may not be entitled to any recognised military decoration, but uh, he deserves a medal for sheer cunning. <laughs> There you are, gents. Three halves of bitter. That'll be one and three. I'll do this, Wilson. Oh, that's very nice of you, sir. Not at all. Go on, then, Lord. Thank you, sir. One and three. Who's next? There's yours, Jones. Thank you, Mr. Manrin. Cheers. Cheers. Well, sir, that all seemed to go off very well. Yes, I suppose, sir. I didn't really care for church praise very much. Never have liked praying by numbers. <laughs> Still, I thought the men marched extremely well. They did indeed, sir. I was rather surprised that Godfrey fell out when the vicar got to the blessing after the service. Didn't he realise he was marching off with those of the Jewish faith and the RCs? <laughs> Actually, sir, he was running off to the WCs. <laughs> Hello, I say there. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Hello there, main wearing. Thought you didn't drink. Oh, the occasional half, you know. By the way, how about you? Would you like to take a drink with number one platoon? No, 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 thank you, no, thank you, no, no, no. I've got a large puggle party. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I suppose alcohol could bring that condition on. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the chair, Napoleon, I'll have a double scotch. I don't remember extending the invitation to you, Warden. Yeah, just clear off, will you? Look, mate, this is a public bar. If I want to stand here, I will. Well, Mainwaring, enjoy the parade. Yes, quite a good turnout, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry you and your men were behind us. It meant I couldn't see your drill. Mind you, <laughs> we heard it all right. <laughs> Always late, weren't you? Always one second behind everyone else. Yes, well, the wind was blowing in the wrong direction. <laughs> some of us had difficulty hearing the word of command. And some of you had difficulty walking, too, eh? <laughs> Now, look here. Next time, Mainwaring, you ought to ask HQ if your lot can do the march past in bath chairs. <laughs> oh. Now, that's not fair, Captain Square. Manry was striding out like a two-year-old. Mind you, we didn't have as much weight to carry as you, Captain Square. Not having any medals. <laughs> <laughs> when Hitler sets foot on our shores, it's fighting efficiency that'll count. We're no good waving medals at him. <laughs> a damn sight better than waving your pension books. Ha! <laughs> My men would wipe the floor with yours any day. They're fitter and superior to yours in every way because they haven't been stifled by a CEO with old fashioned ideas and a Colonel Blimp mentality. Yeah, quite right, sir. Quite right. You tell him, sir. You tell him. You'll prove that or apologize, Mainwaring. I will not apologize, but I will give you something to think about. Remember, it's my platoon that's been chosen as guard of honor for Winston Churchill, not yours. What do you mean, Mainwaring? What are you talking about? I'm not saying anything else. Come along, Jones, Wilson, we're going. But I haven't finished my drink yet, sir. Bad luck. You should learn to drink a bit quicker. Hodges! <laughs> yeah, what is it? You wanted a drink? Finish that. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Oh, no, 
Now, uh, pay attention, man. Before we dismiss, I have a couple of things to say. The first is more in the nature of an official announcement regarding something which is by now fairly common knowledge. During the Prime Minister's inspection of the coastal defences, this platoon has been chosen to act as the Guard of Honour. As needless to say, we should all feel very proud. We have worked hard, and this is our reward. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Mr. Pike. What will we have to do? Well, we, uh, we provide the Guard of Honour, of course. Yes, but what does that mean? It means you stand stock still for a very long time, and ever so often some defeats. <laughs> great fun, great fun. People only faint when they've been standing in the sun a long time. Yes, well, that won't worry us. As it's Christmas, we're not likely to have any sun. They do in Australia. We're not in Australia. <laughs> I had an uncle who went to New Zealand, but, but not at Christmas. <laughs> yes. Well, talk about it afterwards, Godfrey. <laughs> I want to move on to the subject of target practice. Now that ammunition is a little more plentiful, we shall be having another session on Sunday week. In view of the appalling show we put up last time, I want you all to make every effort to attend. All right, that's all for this evening. Dismiss. I'm sorry, Doctor. Wilson, come into the office, will you? Yes, of course, sir. I've been meaning to ask you. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to the town clerk about the field craft lecture? Yes, sir, I did, yes. He's given us permission to use the recreation ground, so as long as we keep away from the children's swings and the Donald Duck sand pits. <laughs> and we're to keep off the rose beds as well. He doesn't seem to take us very seriously, you know, does he? I rather got that impression, sir. Well, he soon changes tune when he hears the tramp, tramp of Nazi jackboots pounding across his bowling greens. <laughs> Come in. Ah, uh, good evening. Uh, Captain uh, Mannering, I presume. I'm Brigadier Bell from HQ Southern Command. Uh, we've never met, but I expect you've heard of me. Yes, yes, of course, sir. Yes, your, your name does ring a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Brigadier, good evening. This is my sergeant, Sergeant Wilson. Uh, good evening, Sergeant. Good evening, sir. Sorry to drop in on you like this, but uh, I thought it might be the best way. <laughs> Something rather embarrassing cropped up. <laughs> thought we ought to discuss it. Would you like me to... No, uh, no, to... no, 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 that's all right, Sergeant. Well, I'll come straight to the point. As you know, we informed you the other day that this platoon had been chosen to provide the Guard of Honour for Churchill's forthcoming visit. Yes, we're very proud. Looking forward to it very keenly. Oh, dear. It's a pity. I don't understand, sir. Well, uh, quite frankly, the situation is this. In choosing your platoon to be Guard of Honour, we appear to have rather upset the CEO of another local unit who considers that his lot have just as much claim to this honour as yourselves. Really? I find that very difficult to swallow. I'm sure no one could have done more than us to assist this country in its hour of need. Can you think of anyone, Wilson? Well, Air Chief Marshal Darding has done quite well. <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. You must excuse my sergeant. Sometimes tends to adopt a rather whimsical attitude to important matters. I'm very glad to hear of it. We need people with a sense of humour in times like these, you know. Anyway, you're obviously going to find out sooner or later, so I might as well tell you that the chap whose nose we put out of joint is Captain Square of the Eastgate platoon. Ah, uh, Captain Square, now I understand. Well, what's going to happen? Well, we've decided that the fairest way would be to organise a sort of competition, and whoever wins uh, provides the guard of honour. I see. Well, we're not afraid of a fair fight. After all, if we're prepared to take on the Hun, I'm sure we can beat Captain Square's lot. That's the spirit. Well, I must be off. Yes, of course, sir. Yeah, by the way, what form will the competition take? Well, we haven't quite made up our mind about that yet. I'll tell you what, I'll try and get someone to give you a ring tomorrow evening. Cheerio. Good night, sir. <sighs> Honestly, Wilson, what, what on earth does Square think he's playing at? Goes without saying that we should provide the Guard of Honour. Does it, sir? After all, his platoon was formed more or less the same time as ours. We're not really senior. What do you mean? Of course we're senior. I remember how you and I listened to Anthony Eden's speech and then burst into action. Yes, I know, sir, but surely one can't penalise Captain Square now just because he didn't happen to be listening to the radio then. <laughs> I mean, you see, it's just not cricket. I don't want any of that sort of talk, Wilson. This is war, not lords. <laughs> You know, Wilson, I do hope we get a full turnout for that target practice. We can certainly do with the experience. I was very ashamed of our efforts last time. Oh, I don't know, sir. Some of the men managed to hit the targets. Yes. 
I don't see how they could have mistaken them for the tyres on the area commander's staff car. <laughs> Did they hit all four of them? Five. They got the spare as well. <laughs> Come in. Uh, excuse me, Captain Mannering, but this uh, letter's just come for you. It's from HQ. Ah, that should be interesting. Probably the details of the competition between ourselves and the Eastgate platoon. When no one telephoned last night, I thought they might have dropped the whole idea. Well, I'll be off then. Set up. No need for you to leave, Walker. After all, this affects the whole platoon. Now, let's see. From Brigadier Bell, HQ, Southern Command. That's the chap who was here the night before last. To Captain Mannering, Warmington on Sea, platoon. Well, that's you. <laughs> Thank you, Wilson. I'm aware of that. <laughs> Subject to competition. The competition to decide which platoon will provide the Guard of Honour will be in two parts. One, map reading. For this, each platoon will need vehicular transport and a platoon standard to hoist when they reach the objective. Well, we can use Jones's van for transport. Yeah. We certainly haven't got a platoon flag. Don't worry, Mr. Mannering. I know a bloke in a rag trade who'll knock us up a lovely flag in a few hours. <laughs> really? Well, that's splendid. Now, the second part of the contest... Of course, it'll cost us. <laughs> yes, I rather thought it might. How much? Well, it depends what you want. Well, <clears throat> I suppose we'd better have the name of the platoon. Some sort of design connected with Warmington. Now, let's see. We're a seaside town. What does that give us? Crossed buckets and spades, sir. <laughs> no, no, no. We need something impressive. Well, I'll tell you what. As you're the local bank manager and the platoon CO, we could have an outline of your head on it. What do you think, Sarge? Yes, yeah, I suppose so, yes. I hadn't realised that it was going to be such a big flag. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to think about it a little more. Now, what's next? The main part of the competition will consist of... Oh, dear. <laughs> now, what's the matter, sir? It's very bad news, I'm afraid. Hmm? Listen to this. The main part of the competition will consist of a shooting match. Each platoon will select three marksmen and be on the range of 1,300 hours on Saturday. Oh, well, that's that, then. We've lost. Yes, sir. Certainly looks like it. If, if only we'd been able to get more ammunition to practice with. I mean, it was obvious they were never going to learn to shoot by just pulling the trigger and shouting, bang. <laughs> well, we might as well resign from the competition now. We haven't a chance. Of course. Well, we don't know how good squares lot are. That's true, but it's a pound to a penny. They're better than us. Oh, what now? Come in. Good evening, Mr. Mannering. Good evening, Mrs. Pike. I'm sorry to bother you, but uh, are you going to be long, Arthur? No, I, I'm just coming, Mavis. Well, I must say, you both look rather miserable. What's the matter? You look as though you've been stuck up against a wall to be shot. I wouldn't have anything to worry about if our platoon was doing the shooting. <laughs> Walker, that's enough defeatist talk. You see, Mavis, uh, there's been a change of plan at HQ, and now there's a very good chance we may not be providing the Guard of Honour after all. Oh, dear, what a pity. And I've washed your best shirt as well. Oh. Yeah, well, of course, it would have been nice, but it's no use crying over spilt milk, is there, eh? Come on, cheer up. Yes, well, it's not that easy. Here, look, I've got an idea. Now, on a Saturday night, I usually go down to the Epidrome with some little orders for the artists, you know, nylons for the birds, whiskies for the blokes. <laughs> Why don't you all come with me tonight, make up a little party, and have a good laugh? I can nip round backstage and do my little bit of business in the interval. Ooh, that's a lovely idea, Joe. <laughs> I bet Mrs. Mannering would like a night out, eh, sir? No, I... <laughs> no, I don't think so. Elizabeth doesn't really approve of people enjoying themselves. <laughs> Especially in wartime. War has a very depressing effect on her. It took nearly 20 years to forget the last lot. <laughs> begin to look on the cheerful side of life again. I... I don't think I shall ever forget the time she started to smile again after all those years. Oh, dear. What happened? Hmm. Munich. <laughs> well, I reckon you'd enjoy yourself, Mr. Mannering. Charlie Cheeseman, the cheerful chump, is topping the bill. Really? <laughs> Charlie Cheeseman? Oh, I do love him. He always makes me laugh. Doesn't he make you laugh, Arthur? Hardly at all. <laughs> well, I'm sure he'll make you laugh this time, you and Mr. Mannering. He'll make you both laugh your heads off, he will. <laughs> so the air raid warden shouted out, Here, missus, you've got a chink in your bedroom. So she poked her head out of the window and said, Do what? 
He said, you've got a chink in your bedroom. So she said, the liar, he told me he was a Japanese admiral. <laughs> oh, oh, he is funny, isn't he, Joe? Not half, Mrs. Pike. <laughs> oh, don't you think he's a scream, Mr. Mannering? He certainly does tend to have that effect. <laughs> I got home the other night and my wife was crying her eyes out. I said, what's the matter? She said, I'm homesick. I said, this is your home. She said, yes, I know, and I'm sick of it. <laughs> you can't help laughing, can you? <laughs> I don't know about you, Wilson, but I've managed so far. <laughs> Wilson? Wilson? <laughs> Lucky devil. <laughs> Now, customers, I'd like to give you a little number, and I don't want it back. Dedicated to all fire watchers entitled, I can't get over a girl like you, so turn out the light yourself. <laughs> I don't want to set the world on a fire. Fire? fire? Where's the fire? Where, where, where is it? You better put it out. Get some water. Man the pumps. It's all right, Taurus. It's all right, Wilson. Only Charlie Cheeseman singing. Oh. <laughs> Good asleep. Oh, sorry, I must have dozed off. Oh, Arthur, you did that last night. You know, Mr. Mannering, I think he's been overdoing it recently. Really? Mother will do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, but don't be too downhearted, because you'll be seeing me again in the second half of our show. God forbid. <laughs> and now for our next act. Ladies and gentlemen, straight from a tour of the provinces, the Hippodrome is proud to bring you the skill to say nothing of the dexterity. From Italy, the great Alberto. Hey. <laughs> Senor Alberto speaks no English, but he will, of course, recognise the warm reception which I'm sure you're going to give his fascinating act. Now, for his first trick, the great Alberto will demonstrate his brilliant marksmanship by shooting table tennis balls, which I shall throw high in the air. Here we go, then. One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Lovely. And uh, thirdly, a uh, three. Oh, isn't he good, Arthur? Yes, yeah, awfully good. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the great Alberto will attempt to shoot the tops off these clay pipes, which, as you can see, are attached to a revolving wheel. And as if that isn't difficult enough, he will stand with his back to the target and fire between his legs. I hope he knows what he's doing. <laughs> Pretty good, that, eh, hey, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Do with him and a home guard. <laughs> and now the great Alberto will perform his most difficult trick. Blindfolded and riding bareback on an excitable young pony, he will shoot a lighted cigarette from the lips of a member of the audience. <laughs> now, who's going to be the first to volunteer? <laughs> now, Arthur, don't you get any ideas? Oh, he's so brave, you know, Mr. Mannering. Don't worry, Mrs. Pike. I don't think he's likely to volunteer. Why not? He's gone to sleep again. <laughs> well, if there are no volunteers, ladies and gentlemen, the great Alberto will regrettably be unable to perform this exciting trick. Oh, now just a minute. Do I see a volunteer? Uh, you're, you're going the wrong way, sir. <laughs> oh, I see, yes, that's right. <laughs> Through the bar, and it's on the left. <laughs> I didn't know Godfrey was coming here tonight. <laughs> Well, if you'll excuse me, Mrs. Pike, I'm going to nip backstage now. Oh, I wish they'd labelled these perishing dressing rooms. I'll try this one. Good evening. Joe Walker's the name. <laughs> Sorry, miss. Oh, I often wondered how they stuck those on. <laughs> ah, here we are. The great Alberta. Come in. Evening. My name's Joe Walker. 
Oh, hi. Oh, what can I do for thee, lad? <laughs> well, it's like this. Um, here, hang on. You're not Italian. Hey, no, 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 I'm not. I've never been there. I come from Wigan, actually. <laughs> yeah, but that fella said you didn't speak a word of English. Ah, oh, well, I mean, that's just for the act, you see. Uh, gives a bit of glamour, like. No, I never went as well under my real name. What was it? Bert Postlethwaite. <laughs> I see what you mean. Here. Yeah. You're not from the local rag, are you? No, 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 no. I I'm a wholesale supplier. Oh, I, yeah. What of? Well, you know, essential supplies, whiskey, knicker elastic, that sort of thing. Uh, well, I'm sorry, lad, but whatever it is you're selling, I don't want that. No, 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 no it's, not, it's not that. So, look, uh, I was out front just now watching your act. Uh, you're a pretty good shot, ain't you? Oh, yeah, I reckon you could say that. Uh, I've been at it a long time. Well, why haven't you been called up, then? I've got flat feet, haven't I? <laughs> oh, I see. Well, look, uh, I've got a little proposition I'd like to interest you in. Oh, aye, yeah. What sort of a proposition? Well, it's very simple. There's nothing to it. This is what I'd like you to do. Now, Saturday afternoon... Come on, Walker. I can't wait about all day. Wilson, well, have you any idea what Walker's up to in the choir room? I'm afraid not, sir. All I know is that he rang me at home after the show last night and asked if you and I could be at the church hall at ten o'clock this morning. Right, here we are, then. Captain Mannering, may I introduce you to Private Postlethwaite? Oh, good morning. New recruit, eh? Welcome to the platoon. Good day to you. Always good to see a new... Just a minute. <laughs> I've seen you before, someone. Ah, oh, well, happen you have. Uh, probably at no, the... No, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess. I'll get it in a minute. <laughs> Pride myself, I never forget a face. Now, let's see. Yeah, I know. You're the new cloakroom attendant at the Rotary Club. <laughs> no, I'm not. Really? You sure? <laughs> You're not even warm. You saw Bert last night at the Hippodrome. He was working under the name of the great Alberto. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the shooting act. No, that's right. <laughs> you settling down in this area then? Leaving show business? <laughs> Rather sudden decision, isn't it? <laughs> no, Mr. Mannering, you don't understand. Bert, or rather the great Alberto, is only joining the platoon for a few hours. That is on Saturday afternoon for the shooting match. Saturday after... You can't be serious. It's outrageous. I've never heard of anything so... Well, the uniform fits pretty well, don't you think? That's not the point. It's... it's... Do you think we'd get away with it, Wilson? <laughs> no, no, sir. If we found out, it could mean a lot of trouble. Yes, that's true. Still, it's maybe our only chance. After all, it's for the honour of the platoon. Now, just a minute. Supposing somebody on the range recognises him. They may have been to the theatre this week. Well, you didn't recognise him, did you? Anyway, we'll give him pebble glasses. Yes, but uh, will he be able to fire with pebble glasses? <laughs> well, he can take them off when he fires. <laughs> we'll say he just wears them for walking. <laughs> well, it's against my better judgement, but I suppose it's worth trying. Right, Private Postlethwaite. Welcome to the Warmington-on-Sea Home Guard. Good. An inner. Not bad, Pike. Keep it up. We've got one more shot. Yeah, I know, Mr. Manreen. Off you go, then. Right. <laughs> Just a minute. <laughs> Why do you make that strange noise? I don't know, really. I saw Gary Cooper do it in a film oh, one. Get it. <laughs> I saw that film, too, so it worked awfully well for Gary Cooper. <laughs> really? It hasn't worked very well for Pike. <laughs> missed altogether. <laughs> Double pegging with Captain Swell's platoon so far. Let's see what your second man can do. Right, Sir Sam Wilson, get someone to call Private Postlethwaite over here. Yes, of course, sir. Permission to speak, sir? Yes. I'd like to volunteer to call Private Postle... <laughs> Postle... Postle... <laughs> Joe, you get him. Oh, so are, Jonesy? Mr. Jones... Uh, while we're waiting, do you think anyone would notice if I uh, communed with nature for a moment? No. <laughs> of course not, Mr. Godfrey. You go ahead. Oh, oh thank you so much. Right. Dr. Jones? Where's Godfrey off to? Godfrey, sir? Well, he, he's doing a bit of nature study, sir. <laughs> Why, she... Hmm. Well, <laughs> ah, Apostle Fitz, there you are. Uh, sorry for the delay, Captain Mannering. A uh, bit of trouble with his new glasses. In what way? He was just about to walk into the river. <laughs> 
Now, Mannering, is this your second shot? Yes, that's right, sir. Private Postlethwaite. Right, carry on. Yes, of course, sir. Off you go, Postlethwaite. And good luck. Au revoir, sir. Too late to back out now, Wilson. Yes, sir. I agree. Just what I was thinking. By Jove. A bull. What? Well done. Oh. 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 I'll, uh, I'll have to get up for this one. What do you mean, get up? Correct firing position is lying on the ground. Oh, but, but I always do my second one with me back to the target and firing through my legs. <laughs> can't do that here. Get down. Well, uh, can't I even have my mirror then? Of course you can't. Just lie down and fire the same way as everybody else does. I thought the idea was that you should fire a lot better than everybody else. Don't be quiet, Wilson. <laughs> Go on, Postlefeet. Lie down in the correct position. Mr. Postlethwaite to you. Yes, all right. Get, just fire. Oh. oh. Miss, I'm afraid. Oh. Oh. Sorry, that's another miss. This is awful, Wilson. Well, I suppose it's just right, sir. <laughs> well done, Mainwaring. Your man got an out of that time. He's getting his form back. Pity that was his last shot, what? <laughs> Next man. Yes, all right, sir. Fraser. Hey, you are, Captain Manning. I'll, I'll do my very best. What went wrong, Puzzlefate? I thought you were supposed to be a crack shot. Well, at least the first one was a bullseye. Oh, well, uh, that one were normal, you see. What do you mean, normal? Well, it's my routine, you see. One normal, one between my legs, one with a mirror. Well, I suppose we should be thankful you didn't try to do the one on horseback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I never have done that one. What do you mean? Well, nobody ever volunteers. Uh, no, no, I tell a lie. Somebody did once... But he had to be called off due to a fainting fit. Oh, poor fellow. Was he out long? Well, it wasn't him. It was me. <laughs> oh! Mr. Manning, Mr. Manning, Fraser shot two balls. Oh, dear. <laughs> like the farmer will want compensation. <laughs> no, sir, no, sir. Two bullseyes on the target. Good Lord. Bulls! Oh, oh, yeah. That's three, sir. Marv. One more to go, Fraser. Aye, aye. I don't understand why you keep waving the rifle up and down like that. It's the only way I can shoot. She was in the minesweepers during the war. I was set off the mines. This movement is like the motion of the sea. Another bull. I don't understand, Fraser. Why didn't you say you were a crack shot? Didn't he ask me? Well, why did you shoot so badly in practice? Didn't he shoot at all at practice? The others always wasted so much ammunition, there was never any left for me. Eh? Well, Mannering, thanks to the last marksman, you're just in the lead. So now let's see if your lads like to have a short rest and we'll continue with the second part of the contest. We'll rendezvous in ten minutes outside the main gate. Very good, sir. We'll be there. Jolly good. See you later. Hell, Mainwaring, you had a bit of luck there, what? Ha, ha, ha. Now, let's see if you do as well with the map reading, but I warn you, my men are pretty good. We're not afraid of competition. My men are also excellent at map reading. We can find our way around this part of the world with our eyes closed. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Cheerio for now. Pompous idiot. <laughs> now, anybody know the way to the main gate? <laughs> Right now, pay attention, please. Pay attention. In a moment, I shall give you, Mannering, and you, Square, two brand new platoon standards for you to hoist when you reach your objective. They were delivered to HQ this morning from your suppliers, and as you can see, they're still in their wrappers. Here's your Square. Thank you, sir. And yours, Mannering. Thank you very much, sir. I shall now read the map reference, and as I shall only read it once, listen very carefully. The map reference is 629571. Right, off you go, and may the best platoon win. Right, men! Move! Transport! Hurry along, Jones. Get the van moving. <laughs> Any faster, Jones? I'm doing 28 miles an hour now. <laughs> what more do you want? Well, at least we got off to a better start than Cotton Square. Fancy getting stuck in the mud like that. <laughs> Serve him right for trying to take that shortcut. 
With any luck, there'll be at least half an hour digging their vehicle out of that mud. There's crossroads coming up, Mr. Fraser. Which way now? Straight on, son. You quite sure, Fraser? Oh, if you think you can read this map any better, you're quite welcome to try. Excuse me, sir. What is it, Godfrey? I-, I wonder if we can stop a moment. <laughs> I'd like to be excused. Certainly not. This is a race against time. Yes, I know. And I don't think I'm going to win. No. <laughs> Quiet and shut your trap. I, I beg your pardon? That sliding thing, that panel behind you, shut it. Oh, I see. Come on, Jones. Must be able to go faster than this. Get your foot down on the floorboards. I've got it right down now, sir. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, 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 oh. Look what you're doing. The van's all over the road. Yeah. I know it is, sir. I know it is. What's the trouble, then? I'm sorry, sir. Tell you, sir, I'm getting me, getting me all trouble back, sir. What's that? Malaria, sir. Oh, no, no. Stop, stop the man at once. Yes, he is. Uh... <laughs> right, you stay where you are, Jones. <laughs> What's going on, Mr. Manreen? It's Jones. He's got an attack of malaria. You and Walker, get him out of the seat and onto the grass. Okay, Mr. Manreen. Where's Godfrey? <laughs> medics, medics. I'm uh, coming, sir. Where have you been, Godfrey? Oh, I- I'm sorry, sir, but as we stop, I took the opportunity to be excused. Well, you've no business to. <laughs> As the medic, it's your duty to be on hand at all times. Oh, dear. Well, uh, what's wrong with Mr. Jones? He's got a bout of malaria. Have you got anything we can give him? Uh, I don't really know, sir. I, I've got some aspirin, some, some bicarbonate of soda, uh, and some ointment for wasp stings. Wasps. <laughs> this is a fighting unit. Not a girl guides outing. Quenine! Quenine! That's what he needs out of water. Quenine! And he should be kept warm. You're quite right. One of you bring some blankets. Got any quinine? Uh, no, Coffee. sir. But uh, I got a, a bottle of elderberry wine. <laughs> My sister says he swears by it. That'll have to do, I suppose. Here, Jones, drink this. Oh, thank you, sir. Hold his head, Walker. He's spilling it. Here, here you are, sir. Here's a blanket. Good. Cover him up. Oh, thank you. Oh, don't you worry about me, sir. I, I, I've had these attacks for, 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 for 40 years, so they soon pass. All right, Walker. Pike, get Jones into the back of the van. Yes, and hurry up. We've lost enough time as it is. I'll take the wheel. Straight over here, sir. And then another half mile will turn left. Thank you, Fraser. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Mr. Jones has turned all yellow. Put some more blankets on him. More blankets, righto. Don't you think we ought to get him a doctor, sir? We can't do that. We'll lose the race. Besides, you heard what he said. He often gets these attacks. They soon pass. We're coming up the turning very soon now, sir. Oh, how absolutely sweet. <laughs> what are you talking about? Why, well, that dear little cottage that we just passed. <laughs> that roof and roses round the door. Just like the one in Snow White. Oh, stop gawping at the view. And keep your eye on the road. Mr. Manreen, Mr. Jones isn't yellow anymore. Good, good. He's turned purple. Good. What? Looks like a beetroot. Put some more blankets on him. Right, I'm more blankets. Turn <laughs> left here, sir. Left again, sir. Thank you, Fraser. Hey, you in the back there. How's the patient? I'm afraid Mr. Jones is steaming, sir. Steaming? Uh, yes, sir. The condensation is running down the walls. <laughs> the best thing for him, let him sweat it out. Get him plenty a drink. There's only the bottle of elderberry wine, and uh, he's drunk half of it. I'll give him the rest. This is an emergency. Very good, sir. Turn left again here, sir. Right you are, Fraser. Oh, how enchanting. What are you talking about, Wilson? We just passed that dear little Snow White cottage again. What? <laughs> oh, no, we must have gone round in a circle. What are you playing at? Hey, don't shout at me. We can all make mistakes. I don't want any insubordination from you, Fraser. Take his name, Wilson. Look, sir, look, up ahead. <laughs> There's the Eastgate van stopped at the side of the road, sir. So it is. I think they've broken down, sir. Ah, look. There's one of Square's men under the bonnet. Let's give him a shout as we go by. Bad luck, Square. See you later. Well, Wilson, I never was one to count my chickens before they hatched, but I think we're going to be providing that guard of honour after all. (laughs) 
This is it, sir. And there's the door to the church tower. Well done, Fraser. Thanks, sir. No sign of squares, lad. Now, here's the brigadier. Well done, Mannering. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Right, come on, lads. Let's get up to the top of the tower. Fraser, we've got the flag. Oh, I hear it, sir. Right, off you go. We'll follow you. Right. Come on, everybody. Follow me. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. What is it, Pike? Mr. Jones wants to come up the church tower with oh, us. Oh, don't be ridiculous. The man's ill. No, I'm not. I'm all right now. <laughs> My malaria has shed itself. One bottle of Mr. Godfrey's elder brother wine, and I'm a new man. <laughs> Heavens, Wilson, he's drunk. Yes, sir. I think perhaps we'd better take him up with us. Might have looked too good if the brigadier saw him like this. Yes, you're right. Pike and Walker, bring Jones with you. Come on. Up to the top. Hurry up, Captain Manorette. We're coming as fast as we can. It's a long way to the tower. It's a long way to climb. For heaven's sake, keep Jones quiet. <laughs> right, hey. men, dismount and up the tower. Come on, look, look down there. And the street. Uh, Captain Square's arrived. Well, there's no time to be lost. Give me the flag, Fraser. I'll just take a rotten up, sir. And there you are. Can I put the flag up, Mr. Manning, please? I used to do it in the Scouts. You know, I was in the Owl Patrol, you know. I think they were best. Mind you, the Eagles had nice people. Look, just get on with it. Get on with it. <laughs> yes, I think it would be an awfully good idea. Uh, Captain Square will probably be halfway up the tower by now. Let me help you, Mr. Manning. I want to help put a flag up. Let me put a flag up, Be Mr. quiet, Mr. Jones. Pike's going to do it. Sorry. Anyway, you're drunk. I'm not drunk. I want to put a flag up. I've put a lot of flags up in my time. Wait a minute. Oh, oh it's coming on again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, men, lay him down on the ground. You'll be all right, Jones. Come on, Pike, leave that flag. Lend a hand. I'm going, I'm going. Oh, it's cold. We ought to keep him warm, Mr. Mannering. Yes, all right. Everybody take the jackets off. Come on, all of you. Can you help? I can remove my flannel binder. Thank you, Godfrey. I don't think we've got the time for that. I must have more wine, more elderly wine. I'm afraid there isn't any more, Mr. Jones. Mr. Mannering, look, behind you. It's Captain Square. Good Lord. Hoist it up, Sergeant. Very good, sir. Bad luck, Mainwaring. But I'm afraid we've won. But that's not fair. We were here first. Ah, but you didn't run your flag up, did you? I'm sorry, Mr. Manny. It was my fault. No, 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 no. It's not your fault, Jones. I shall lodge a protest. We were definitely first. It's flying the flag that counts. Aye, that's true, sir. And if you look up there, you'll find it's... It's our flag that's flying. Hey, hey. What are you talking about? Good Lord, Wilson. Fraser's is right. It is our flag they're flying. Look. First platoon, Warmington on sea. Chilkinf. What do you think you're playing at, you blithering idiot? You've flown their standard. It was the one you handed me, sir. Mainwaring, what skullduggery is this? Somehow I'm sure you're at the bottom of it. How dare you? Nothing whatever to do with me. You've lost, that's all. Mainwaring. I strongly suspect that you're an absolute outsider. Now, come along, Jenkins. I can see the brigadier about this. Well, that's that, sir. There's obviously nothing you can do. We've won. Of course we have. Oh, look. He's left his flag behind. Chuck it down to them. All right, sir. Uh, I shouldn't bother doing that, sir, if I was you, son. Well, it's no bother. I, I can just... Uh... Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Wilson. <laughs> Let's have a look at that flag. <laughs> Claw that. It's not squares, it's ours. It, it can't be, it can't be, sir. That's our flag flying at the top of the pole. Look. I tell you, this is. Look. God. First platoon, Warmington on sea, home guard. Well, that means, sir, that both the flags are ours. Oh, well done, Wilson. You are black. <laughs> Precisely, they're both ours. Walker. <laughs> you had our flag made. This must be something to do with you. Well, it's, uh, it's like this, Mr. Manorino. I had one flag made for us, and uh, I thought it wasn't quite up to standard, so I had another one made, which meant I had two of our flags. Go on. Well, it just so happened that uh, I also promised Captain Square that I'd get their flag made. And I suppose by some uh, strange quirk of fate, our spare one must have got mixed up with this. <laughs> dear, oh dear. <laughs> oh, the terrible mistakes we've made. Walk up. I don't believe one word you're saying. I didn't think you would, Samuel. <laughs> Still, you like us to use our initiative, don't you? Well, I think Walker certainly did that, sir. Mm. Walker, there's no doubt about it. You're incorrigible. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> very nice of you to say so, sir. <laughs> well, Wilson, I can't tell you how proud I shall be when this platoon stands there and provides that guard of honour for Churchill. Won't it be exciting? Oh, yes, sir, it'll be exciting. 
Oh, by the way, sir, uh, Jones is feeling a lot better. Oh, good. Uh, here, Mr. Mannering, uh, mm-hmm. I've just had a thought. This uh, guard of honour we're providing is uh, for the Prime Minister, isn't it? That's right, Walker. For Winston Churchill himself. Why do you ask? Well, I've just had a whole lot of cigars fall off the back of a lorry. <laughs> Do you think he'd be interested? Here, go in, Chief. How dare you? <laughs> that special edition of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden, Pearl Hackney, Mrs. Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Geoffrey Lumsden, Captain Square, Jack Watson, Brigadier and Cheerful Charlie Cheeseman, and Norman Bird as Bert Possesweight. Additional music provided by Jack Emblow and Len Johnson. Present Arms is adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dials. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest uh, bit of comedy with Dad's Army. And don't forget, we'll be back tomorrow with yours truly, Johnny Dollar, going live at 5pm GMT. For now, thanks for listening. I hope you've had a good week and I hope you're looking forward to a top-notch weekend. We've got a really busy weekend coming up. But I'll keep you in the loop and let you know what we're doing. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you tomorrow on Brett's All Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.